Hey everyone, today we're diving into an awesome sample project from Agora Studio. It's free and available right now. There's so much good stuff packed into it that I had to make a video. I will highlight my favorite bits, share useful tips, and show some pro tricks you can learn from the project. Let's get started. First thing, on Fab, you actually find two Agora projects. One is an animatic project that uses the Odyssey plugin, great for storyboarding. And the other is the animation sample, which is what we are covering today. I won't walk the entire project top to bottom. I'll focus on the highlights and the parts I found most useful. Links are in the description. Right when you open the project, you land on a tidy welcome scene. A smart move. Instead of dropping you into a huge main level that takes ages to load, you get a light startup scene and a pop-up window in the center. That pop-up is an editor utility widget that lets you jump to the main level in one click and choose quality presets. Handy if your machine needs a break. This is pro-level content and it can be demanding. Take some time to open that widget. It's where the logic lives. You can inspect how the presets are built, the console variables exposed, and other useful automation. These utility widgets are a great way to learn professional workflow because everything is visible and reusable. And this is how we manage some things in general. Jump into the main novel and that's where the real work is. Open the master sequencer and you can analyze every shot, every nested subsequence, the animation layers, and how each shot is composed. The animation quality is top notch and it's a gold mine for study. To get your bearings, use the nav sequencer. It gives you a bird's eye view of all shots and nested sequences in the master. It's perfect for quickly seeing the whole structure. You also notice that actors shown in red are usually spawnables. Base state changes depending on the timeline position. That is useful detail when you inspect how shots are set up. One thing to call out for newcomers. Check the lighting per shot. You'll often find a lot of lights focused on a single character. That might feel excessive to game-focused devs, but remember this is a cinematic work. The AM is the exact look for each shot, even at the cost of performance. This is normal for linear cinematic projection. You also spot custom light controller actors created to drive set lighting and color. That's a great pattern to reuse. Instead of tweaking individual lights, you control them centrally for fast iteration and consistent color management across the shots. And that brings us to another key aspect of professional production, custom built tools. In production, the goal is always to reduce manual work. The more we can automate or build procedural logic, the smoother and faster the workflow becomes. You also notice a custom blueprint actor used to trigger specific variables. This is a clever way to manage console variables without having to re-enter everything every time you reopen the project. Small tools like these save a lot of time in the long run. Now, let's zoom in on the characters. You'll find five in total, including a quadruped and a cute little robot. You have full access to everything, the skeletal meshes, bone structures, rig setups, all the control rigs and custom modules, and of course, all the final animations and sequences. Except for our little robot friend here, all the characters use modular control rig. And what's really cool is that Agora built custom modules specifically for this project. There are brand new physics modules for her, updated chain modules with improvements over the default ones, and even some gems like the mouse zipper module. On any character, if you select the mouth control, you'll see animation channels that drive a left-right zipper logic. Open the mouth bits and you instantly see the effect when you play with it. If you displace the character's bones, the mechanism becomes clearer. The module finds a midpoint between each upper-lower lip bone pair and drives the deformation. Understanding how it works is actually simple. You can reverse engineer it right inside Unreal. Just select the control, not which module is used, filter for it in the modules panel, and open it from your content folder. In the forward solve, under the zipper logic section, you'll see exactly how it's built. You can study it, reuse the logic in your own setups, or just drop the module directly onto any character. That's the real strength of modular control rig, avoiding those massive and messy graphs. Each character in the project has its own design and little quirks. And that variety is awesome to have, especially this super cute creature. It's not every day you get access to a high quality quadruped rig ready for animation. It's well built and very easy to reuse. With all this, you have now everything you need to animate directly inside Unreal Engine without the usual struggle of finding characters or building rigs from scratch. And I'll be honest, I'm absolutely going to use these characters in future videos too. This little robot has a really nice rig setup that I highly encourage you to explore. Unlike the other characters, it doesn't use a modular control rig. It's built with a regular control rig. That means you have direct access to the core logic driving everything. On top of that, 
it's connected to an animation blueprint with some more advanced behavior, including a custom eye texture display system. Using an enumerator, you can pick and play different facial expressions via spawn control. A smart, reusable setup that's fun to play with. And there's a lot more animation gold inside the projects. Every shot hides a little gem you can dissect. Complex rig, clever uses of deformers like lattices, and plenty of other techniques you can study and adapt. It can feel overwhelming at first, but stick with it. Diving into a pro animator's work and seeing their techniques exposed is one of the fastest ways to level up. There's so much in it that I can continue and talk about it for hours. But I'm curious to know what you think about this project and if there's anything you'd like me to explain more in details for a future video. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for your support. Sorry for last week because I was a bit sick, so I haven't time to make a, a video. But here we are, back again on the road for a new tutorial each week on Tuesday. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, let me know what you think about this video and this awesome project, and see you next week for a new one. Ciao!